Okay, I did it again. The biggest bike score yet. The most money I have ever spent on random parts off the internet. And it's only one box. Last time I got five boxes for 300 bucks. This time I spent $520 and walked away with this tiny box. Slightly ridiculous. Hopefully I grabbed everything. But usually it's kind of middling stuff. This stuff's all pretty baller. So let's go through it. So this stuff all came from a um, like a bike yard sale posted on Facebook Marketplace. I went down there, I, you know, there's there's some cases of parts, and I was like, whatever, maybe it'll all be middling stuff, and I'll go off from a bunch. I went down there, and he's like, ah, oh, just pick what you want. I don't know how much I want for stuff. Really cheap. You know, it'll be like half what you think. And I picked out a bunch of stuff, and I went through it, and made a list, and priced it all, and it ended up being like $1,200. First, I'm like, how about 300 bucks this whole pile? And he's like, ah, I'm going to go through it. It was like 1200 bucks. I was like, okay. Like, I don't have that. I mean, he made like a list on his phone with the name of the parts and the prices. And then went through again. He lowered it again. And he lowered it again. He said, oh, that's too much. Oh, okay, that's too much. Oh, I'll give you that for this. And every time I asked about something, he's like, it's this much. Like, mm. And he's like, okay, I'll give you it for, you know, 20 bucks cheaper than that. And by the time we're done, I got 80, 90% of everything I had in my pile. And it was only 500 bucks. So it helps to ask and to keep checking and see specific prices on things. Because... If they won't go for uh, really cheap for a big giant lot, yeah, go through each individual thing and go, eh, talk them down. So the first thing I grabbed, another one of these Nitto bars. I think this is the same one I've had like three of now. The, uh, yeah, B3 or B352, 550 millimeter width. I bought one brand new off a guy who didn't use it for a product for 60 bucks. And I bought a whole bike for 60 bucks. And one of these in a Nitto stem on it. And a Paul brake and a bunch of stuff. And uh, I just bought this one. He paid 30 at the Community Cycling Center. And he sold to me for 10 So now I can sell my other one in a Nitto stem, I guess. Maybe make 100 bucks. So that's pretty exciting. I'm going to start digging around. I'm doing some kind of reverse order. By the way, I packed this bag. So, um... At the end, I'm like, do you have a box? He's like, oh yeah, and dumped out a box of parts. I'm like, oh, is that somebody else's stash you're saving for him? He's like, no, nah, that's all stuff I'm gonna throw away or donate. So can I go through it? He's like, yes. So I went through it. Some Chinelli bar tape that looks lightly used or not used. And uh, mostly one of the bubble mailer for eBay and stuff. And there's a few chain rings in there and uh, some stuff. Oh my God, there's so much stuff in this box. The first thing I saw was this bash guard. Looks 130 BCD, big, silver, cool. It's like, yeah, I want that out of a free box. And then there was a couple of little rings and a whole bunch, a whole bunch of uh, mismatched shifters and parts. And I have some nice shifters that are like missing the little dust shields or missing the bolts. So I was like, okay. And I was making my pile of stuff. He started throwing stuff in one pile. I was like, oh, that's the free pile. So like this water bottle cage he threw in, which I didn't look at it very close, I just grabbed. It must be an older Velo Orange. I thought it might be a Nitto. I don't see it. Nitto ones usually say Nitto stamped on them or something. A little double rings in the thing. I think I have another Velo Orange on a different bike, so you know I have a pair, and that's cool. Um, this fork was in his free box. I'm like, what's wrong with this fork? It's like, oh, nothing. This old Medici frame, and the frame cracked. It's got campy dropouts with the eyelets. The whole thing's definitely chromed. Not a lot of threads on the steer, so I must have cut it down. They did a really bad job filing the, the file mark in the back. A lot of good frame builders hated hand filing that. That's a waste of their time, so they did a really bad job or no job at all. But a very nice Medici fork. I'm going to measure it and see if it'll work on something or whatever. Maybe I'll hand file that better the right way and show you guys how to do it in case it ever comes up. Um, if you guys didn't know, I was a frame builder for 10 years, I owned a custom shop, I made Northern Cycles, made a lot of 650B rando bikes, some race bikes, some track bikes, like some touring bikes, just made high-end custom frames the old-fashioned way with the best tubes available and all lugged and beautiful and hand-filed and light and gorgeous, lots of new old stock dropouts and parts, so they were, they were cool, man. If I do say so myself. You threw this in the free pile. I believe it is a quill stem adapter, a little silver one you plug in and clamp on a threadless stem. A little crusty, but you know, come in handy. Grab some tools and he was throwing them in the free pile. So this one's baller, it's black and it's a nine. 
an 8, and something effing tiny that you probably can't see the size of. Whatever, it's tiny. Those are good sizes. I got some cool tools. Check out this old chain wear indicator. Nerdy, normal 330 seconds, normal, narrow, eighth inch, and then it's got the new, good, fair, replace buttons over here. So you like hook it into your chain and drop it down. You probably look, line it up with the pins. Never seen this one. It's uh, super cool. I think it's 30 bucks for all the tools. A Zeus bottom bracket and lock ring tool. So cool. A weird VAR wrench I've never seen before. It looks like it's a 26 and a 28. Probably sizes I'll never ever use, but it's cool. There's VAR on it. Um, the old Shimano Dura Ace chain ring bolt thing with the big giant ones for something. And little normal ones in black. Don't have one of those, so that's, that's a keeper. Oh man, there's so much stuff in here. Oh. Here's a TA chain ring bolt tool I didn't even know existed. A little TA logo on it. It's like weird invent with two teeth. Super cool. I think he threw that in for free. Let's let's just go through the box as it is. So there's a couple things I couldn't pass up. Like I said, he was like asking like twelve hundred bucks. So I wasn't sure what was what. So I put it all down. I just started asking like, how about what do you say for this? What do you say for that? And we were just doing a running tile. I was like, oh, that's twenty. So I wrote thirty, but I'll do it for twenty. And I put it in the pile. And we just kept counting and going up. And so like, just hit five hundred, and then you can just give me the four fifty you have in your pocket. We said you, he said you have to have five hundred bucks, and I'm like, I don't. I took out the max out of the ATM, which is a lie. I don't actually know what max is. So I took four hundred bucks out. I took the max. It's four. He's like, mm. I'm like, but I probably have another fifty bucks in loose change from you know the last few bike things I bought and. Random junk. He's like, okay, four fifty. He's like, get to five, and then I'll give you fifty bucks off. So like, I do it all for four fifty. I'm like, okay. So I start with some expensive stuff, asking questions. So the first thing I grabbed, Sun Tour, Subherb Pro, Road Crank Set, with no heel marks. Pretty nice rings, in great shape. So I got that dude. Superb Pro 170s, so they're too short for me, so I probably will resell them. I like long stuff. And then, you know, all that stuff all over the place. Sun Tour Superb Pro Buttery Smooth Hub Set. Dang, son. With the matching skewers, matching little D-ring ends. So nice. They're free wheels, so I'll probably sell them. Um, and I kept digging, and he had the Sun Tour Superb Pro matching brakes. And I'm like, oh, what do you want for the brakes? And they're probably too much. And I looked, you know, and he's like, oh, I've only had them down for 20 bucks. It's like, yes, sir, because I'll probably ask 60 or 70 on eBay and get it for him. They're kind of later ones, or I think they did like a dual pivot one at the last second, or a hidden spring one at the last second. But they're... They're gorgeous, but yeah, they're too short reachy for me, but they're gorgeous and I couldn't say no. Another set of Sugino ATs. No rings and no special little bolts or anything, but still, I've been getting... I saw some of these go for like 80 bucks the other day. I was like, what? Mine are only going for like 50. I thought that was great, so I'm going to put these up for 50 and see if I get that for them too. Because they're again... Oh, they're 175, so maybe I'll keep them and use them on something. I think he charged me like 10 bucks for him, and he told me to go dig through the 110 rings and pick out some rings for him. So I did. Oh, here's a bunch more of the free stuff. So digging through the free box, I got some little shorty screwdrivers. Little Pittsburgh, nothing cool. I had a bunch of mismatched shifter sets. These are like um, some more 8-speed SOAR replacement ones. This is an older one. Doesn't say how many on it, so I'm guessing probably like 6, because they started saying after that. But you know, I'm missing some of these little plastic things off some nice shifters, and um, I need some bolts and stuff. Here's some more. These are in the free box. These ones are 105 shifters. Someone sanded the logo off of, but it has all the hardware, has the bolt. I'm like, yeah, I want some 105. I think they're six speed or whatever, so either friction or I'll steal these plastic dudes off some, some nicer ones that I have. 
couple more of the free shifters. Oh, this one's got a little broken plastic bit, and it's, it's the other matching 105, so I don't know. Might care, might sell them, might save them for parts. Yeah, this one's got the little little cover I'm missing too. It's like a later like eight speed 105, darker gray. Oh, Sun Tour Sprint. He also had the Sun Tour Sprint group and the frame it came off of. And I was looking at it, and he. I think I got the front and rear derailleur. I think I got the brakes. I think I got the cranks. It came off a really fancy Japanese handmade Panasonic frame with a hand paint job, like something cool. And he had the bottom bracket and the headset still in the frame. And I asked him to buy the frame for the bottom bracket and the headset. They wanted 175 for it. It wasn't my size, and I wasn't going to build it, and blah, blah, blah. So I didn't buy it. I'm pretty sure I have the right headset for this anyways off a different project. It's the Tongue version that sometimes came with these. And no one cares about old cup and cone bottom brackets, so, like, whatever. Okay, here's some baller stuff. Two Nitto Dirt Drop stems. One's the true early double bolt one. One's the later one. That's oh, they're both relieved, so you can fit drop bars in these if you want. This one's uh for 26.0 bar. This one doesn't say. They're both 22.2 instead of earlier wing nutty stuff. I love these stems. I got them for 10 bucks each. You usually, um, God, I've seen people trying to sell these for 90, 100 bucks. It's just, just wild. So these are exciting stems. I kind of wanted one the other day for something. Another set of my favorite thummies. These Suntour Power Ratchet with all chrome instead of black. Just the best shifters. They hold any gear. They're perfect for like 3x7 or 8. So really you can probably do 3x10 with them. That would be only slightly finicky and annoying. People don't seem to care anymore. I really think that anything over 9 you need the correct shifter for. But people are trying to run friction shifters with 11 speed. Just don't care. Their chain's always grinding on the gear in the back. Because they can't get them perfectly precise. So you gotta watch the new Pathless Pedal videos. Russ has made a shifter with a big giant barrel. So you can do up to 11 speed. And it pulls way more cables. So you can really get in those tight spots and make little finicky adjustments. But guys are asking like 90 bucks for these on eBay now. I think he charged me 30, which is very reasonable. I usually buy them at 25 and then sell them for 50 at the shop. So 30 is great. And these are very nice. No rust spots, no nothing. I kind of stopped selling these. It's like my fourth pair of them now because I sort of save them for builds. But I got four pairs now. I might sell one. Went through all the brake levers. Here's a real boring set of replacement Sora level brake levers, but 10 bucks and they're in all right shape. You know, they're great for generic builds. I also found this single FL750. I kept seeing it, so I thought maybe he had two. Maybe I'll find the other one in here. He threw it in for free because it's just a single, which is totally cool. At the last minute, after I retallied everything up, and we were at my, we were up to 495. I was like, okay, for five. Then I asked, well, what about these cranks? They're in my pile, but I thought I'd want a zillion dollars for them. It's like, oh, I only got like 25 on those. And I'm like, well, I went to my wallet and like, I had $14 in ones hidden. I'm like, well, I just got five left over that 500 and uh, this $14. And he's like, okay. So I got this nice set of uh, FCM737 Dior XT. Like real late Dior XT. Still silver. I think they're like the smaller 94, 58 BCD. 175 is my size. Silver. This would look really great with that 8 speed Dior derailleurs front and rear, which are like my favorite. So I kind of got a Dior XT mini group. Just need some shifters or something. I think I got both derailleurs. I got two nice rears, and I think I might have a good front that's the bottom pole and all that. I also asked about these. These are like the second to last thing I asked about. And he's like, oh, I only got like 10 bucks on these brakes. The nice, I think these are like the medium you reach. Um, Shimano 600, you know, 6207. Same thing that are on that Cannondale, but they're the recess nut instead of the nutted, which is weird about that Cannondale. So, super cool. Medium you reach. I might end up using these because, you know, I like. Uh, Converting 27 inch wheeled bikes to 700 cs because then you have room you can get at least 32s and fenders instead of only being able to fit 23s or 25s on old bikes, which is so annoying. So these are hot, they might go on eBay, they might go in my personal collection, they might go on a bike. Another set of Sun Tour Sprint Brakes, all original and complete. I have my other set of these from the last bike I built or bought with some Sprint stuff on it. 
And they've been on eBay for a long time and no one cares. The bike before that I bought was all Sprint. I found a Facebook group for uh, all Sun Tour Facebook group. And I had all the Sprint stuff. And the guy, the guy in Australia gave me 200 bucks plus $80 shipping for a flat rate box to Australia. So I was like, oh man, this Sprint stuff's worth money. But on eBay, no one cares. So I might have to go back to that Facebook group and see if anybody wants to buy me some Sprint stuff. Because now i got two sets of these brakes that... And the Sun Tour Sprint cranks, and they are also in very good shape off a nice Panasonic. But they're also only 170s, and they're pretty, and there's no rings. He tried one almost as much for these as he did for the Super Pro with the rings. So I was like, "Hey, man, come on! There's no rings. They're, they're lesser. They're lesser cranks." And he's like, "Okay," and I think you know, charged me like 35 for them, where he wanted like 50 before. And I got them. They're real gorgeous and cool. And I got the matching Superb Pro rear derailleur. Ooh, it's pretty, really lightly used, good shape. I think he mostly does what I do. He, he'll buy up any bike he sees really cheap on Craigslist and play around and mess around with them. And he's 650B most of his bikes are all conversions. It was pretty cool. Sun Tour Superb front derailleur, matchy matchy. Got myself quite the little group here. I might ask 300 bucks for that stuff. Try to make some of this $500 back. Sun Tour Sprint front derailleur. It's in pretty good shape. It had a really nice Durace one too, but I noticed there was a bunch of chain rub and dead, and I was like, nah. How about these shifters? And he threw them in cheap because I pointed out it's broken plastics, missing the thing, doesn't even say what it is, and I'm like, really, I got a bunch of shifters in that last lot, but they're all missing this bolt and D ring. So I really just kind of want them for parts to make some of the other nice bar, bar ends I got into sets. So that's cool. I got several sets of old Sun Tour Power Ratchet. I believe these are the Sprint. They might be the Pro. There might not be a difference. But complete Sun Tour. So the down tube shifters, and I think these are the dual ones, the index, but they also have the Power Ratchet mechanism. You can always tell by this little stainless case that goes around them with a the little rivet. And the little power ratchet goes inside that. And these are the best shifters. They hold your gear. Like every other shifter in the world before, these slipped all the time. You're constantly tightening that D-ring. They're slipping when you're standing. They're super annoying. These are the truth. Rivendell ripped this off for their silver shifters, which are all right. But they slip. They, they made them different. They made them with a smaller ratchet. They're not as good. But they're pretty, and you can still get them, which is nice. Um, the trick with the silver shifters is I always put like a little star washer under here. You can see the uh, sort of like little knurling under this guy. So I get a little star washer, basically is like the knurling, and I put a little Loctite on here. So then you can lock them down, get them adjusted about where you want, lock them down. And that'll solve the problem with the silver shifters. Yeah, here's the other one. Yeah, I'm definitely going to say the nicer set's going to be for the Super Pro, the other set's going to be for the... the, um... The Sprint. Super pretty. Here is the Superb Pro levers. And they're in pretty good shape. I really thought these levers were older, but they all came together. Maybe they're all in that group. Maybe these are, yeah, late 80s. I already saw these are like the 70s ones. So like, can't be Novo Record ripoffs. But the hoods are in good shape. They're pretty. I bought these back in the past and put them on some of our custom builds. I've sanded them all out and hand polished them and put them custom build that got stolen, which is one of the big reasons why I want to close the shop. Just getting ripped off all the time. That, uh, that had a polished set of these on it. In case you ever see a nice brown Norway line with a polished set of those on it. Tracked it down to a pawn shop and couldn't get the cops to go to the pawn shop. It did not care. I believe these are the sprint level levers and they're arrow. They got nice bodies. They're not scuffy. Say sun tour on the side. Got the dumb white hoods, but the trick to these is uh, wash your hands with like a gritty pumicey soap and wash these while you're doing it. Get all that off and talcum powder on them and wipe the, the dirt and talcum powder off once in a while and add some more. Oh, we're really getting down to the bottom of the barrel. Another park pin spanner, another Sagino pin spanner. Saw me messing around with a uh, fag and I broke one of my pins from the Sagino. They're like 10 bucks on eBay a piece. Or he threw in this pin spanner for like two bucks. So 
It's good to have an extra one with bits. Here's another bag. He's trying to charge me money for it. I don't know what he charged me in the end. Because he thought it was another set of the, the Sun Tour Power Ratchets. But it's not. It's a single um, front Sun Tour Power Ratchet. And then a set of Shimano No Logos. But I think these are the same one as the 600 shifters on this candle. They don't say 600. There's like a friction plane shifters. And it looks like they're probably complete. I have to go through that bag. A couple more things I found in this free pile. A new old stock thing of Toshi toe strap buttons in white. It's pretty fun and cool. It's like, what? It's all in Japanese and stuff. This guy um, was like Korean, uh, ethnically Korean. And he's saying he's moving to Korea. That's why he's selling all of his 19 years of stuff. One old black straddle cable hanger. Which looks like a cheap one, but I actually it reminds me of something else, and I think this is off like a good group. I don't remember exactly what, but it's cool. And the chain rings, when I bought those cranks, he started to sweeten the pot. He's like, you can go through all my chain rings, I don't care about, and pick out some rings. So I went and picked out some rings. I think a couple of these I got in his like free pile too. Just a little used, but probably fine. Shimano 32 thinner ring for 74 BCD cranks. This one I got with the, for the Sugino ATs, but I'll probably sell them separately. It's some made in the USA, probably early Velta, even though it doesn't say it. Um, 42 tooth. Some generic E40 tooth that looked pretty nice. It was kind of cool. These are all like 110. And then this is the nicest little ring. Some unknown brand, some gray texture, no markings of any sort. So 74 BCD, and then for the XT, he's like, yeah, I dig through the 94 BCD stuff and grab stuff. So I found one chrome steel. Maybe some life left on it. A little 22 tooth. And some weird cool black stuff. Like, this guy's super thick and machined and has, like, cool fluting and stuff. It doesn't look like it's got any ramps or pins, so it's probably, like, a one by ear ring. Although, it's got these little lips that might be some version of a ramp. Cool and tiny, might be fun on some 94 BCD, and this is definitely an outer, it's got the outer nub. But it's actually kind of really worked in the chain, it's really a dead ring. I don't know why I grabbed it, because I didn't look at it very close and it was free. We'll see, maybe someone will care. Maybe the teeth aren't cut down, well, it's a couple of kind of low ones. It'd probably really be fine for an outer position, um, an outer position, one by or... You know, hacksaw it all down, it'd be a good bash guard, even though it's got some dumb pins right in the way. Um, my friend Krishna rolled up while I was there, right? I got there, and this guy had a set of old 600 hubs laced to some vintage, uh, some vintage 650B rims, some real wide old mountain bike rims. And they had some nice Compass Baby Shoe Pass ultralight tires on them. Krishna's like, what do you want for just the tires? He's like, 20 bucks. And they were like, brand new. It's like, no! But I go through his other 650 tires, and I got a single mismatched. You know, like Baby Shoe Pass, that barely has any miles on it. Oh, Low Low Pass, the 38, for 10 bucks. So it's a good little folder spare. I don't actually have a spare for my rando bike, so I want to go on a long ride. It's good I have those. I also got this, which is a set of essentially brand new 650B Pan Racer Pasalas. They really are brand new. They had to have a little sun fading and stuff on them, but it looks like they've never been on a bike. So they charge me 20 bucks for these 650B by 42 brand new Pasalas. This will be fun if I do a 650B city bike conversion on one of his old road frames. Which is essentially all this guy did on it. He had a bunch of old Bridgestones and the you know, 1000s and they're all 650B road conversions with those Tektro super long pole 559s. And I have two sets of those. And I have all these old road frames. And no one likes 700 by 23s. Maybe one of them is pretty dimple. I might look at these 42s in, but... Most of old road frames, if they're dimpled, you can get the 38s. Sometimes 38s and fenders if you trim the fenders. Maybe we can do 42s and no fenders. And I say, maybe I should do that with those Durace hubs and the SP Dynamo I got coming. Get real nerdy doing that Terry frame, that Serrata built Terry frame. Let's see. Last thing, I have another Pan Racer Paseo. That's a used, but barely. 732, he just threw it in for free. And I was like, yeah, man. And while we're at it, I got two little things in the mail. We might as well check them out. I went on eBay's and I ordered 
So what I thought were hot pink, but maybe they're actually red. They're all individually bagged for reasons. Single speed, light pro, 70-75 alloy, red chainring bolts. I thought they were hot pink. They look real red. I just ordered another set of red ones, just in case. I was originally going to get these for the, the Shogun project we're working on, but they didn't come in time. It's forever. And same with these. Took forever. My direct shipping from China. So they're like $2 a bag instead of like $14 a bag if you buy them from the U.S. I got me some bags. They're supposed to be gold, but they're kind of orange or brassy. Silver. These are all the cable narps. Bright red, which is everyone's favorite. Really weird dark blue. It's fantastic. I've never seen it before. And then black, which I've been using a lot of lately. So I'm restocked on my little cable pinch narps. So this is it. One box for $500. He also had a nice 600 wheel set and um, a Centaur Sprint wheel set. And he said he didn't save that Centaur Sprint wheel set. I'm like, he had so much more stuff in his garage. He's like, I'm probably going to keep all this stuff. So I'm like, give it a few days. Go through it. Anything else you're willing to get rid of, um, let me know. And I'll come down here and buy that Sprint wheel set for 80 bucks. And 80 bucks. And it was a nice hub. It's like really nice rims. It looked really nice. I'm like, I'll, you know, I'll have the whole Sprint group, basically. I'll come give you 80 bucks for that sprint wheel set and uh, take through and buy a bunch more of your stuff. So it's like, all right, give me a week. I'm like, okay. He did tell me, though, the Panasonic bike that the whole sprint group came off of, he only paid $100 for. And he was trying to get like a 175 for just the frame from me, and I gave him, you know, 100 bucks for these parts. And I'm giving him another 80 for the room. I'm like, damn, man. Don't break a guy's heart like that. My only 100 bucks? I already gave you 100 bucks for all this stuff. Some of that frame cheaper. But, uh,. Yeah, I went down there because you know, it was supposed to be a Saturday sale, but then he told me and some of the stuff sold and I emailed him and he's like, oh yeah, I got a couple other guys come look at stuff. And I'm like, no, let me come look first. And he was a cool guy. He's a guy, he's definitely been to Norther a few times and he came to my garage sale and I sent him all the swap meets and he's a cool dude. And uh, he didn't recognize me at all. He was asking me some question. I was explaining the threads on the back of that steer tube and how they weren't filed well. And I'm like, you remember, I used to be a frame builder, right? Like I had that for a decade, and I, I owned that custom shop, and we made all the custom stuff. It's like, oh, wait, I remember that shop. I love that shop. So that was cool. But yeah, you're looking at this one tiny box. $500. So that's fun. 500 bucks. Totally crazy. Totally, totally crazy. Thanks for watching.